Inside Michigan Basketball, delivered by UPS. From figuring it out to getting it done, UPS is here to help. Visit solvers.ups.com to learn more. Buy your local Toyota dealers. Visit buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Buy Pure Water, the official bottled water of the Michigan Wolverines. And by Wallside Windows, we can do that. We are the factory. There's so many times during times of adversity, people go the other way when actually it's the most, it's the best time to empower. Right? Empowered, which means make you greater than you ever thought you could be. Michigan opened the home portion of their Big Ten schedule against Penn State, but they had to do so without their best player. Their leading scorer, rebounder. He leads the team in assists, leads the team in steals. Karis Levert was dressed in street clothes, but it's always been about next man up in Michigan basketball and playing for your brothers. We play the game for our brothers. Let these guys and I and understand one thing. Michigan is a brotherhood. Let's go to work, Coach. Sir. All right, so we talked about the leadership of your guys, Karis Levert, Spike Albrecht, talking to your club about next man up, yep. about being that guy to play for your brother. You've got to be really proud of the way your captains were able to lead this team, even though both were in street clothes. You know, it goes back to our recruiting strategy, where there may be more talented players at sometimes. We just believe in recruiting really good kids who will be best friends for life. And you get then you ain't get that brotherhood. You get these, these people who do anything for each other. When things are good, when things are bad, they'll stick together. And that's really a, a big part of what our master plan is. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But it sure worked today. Let's talk a little bit about that win over Penn State. They start on a 7 nothing run. There was not a lot of energy for your club or in the building. What sparked your team into the comeback? I don't know if it was energy. I think we ended up turning the ball over. We missed two shots, and we turned the ball over twice, and all of a sudden it's 7-0. We came down, and Muhammad Ali just hit a shot. He doesn't, you know, he's not like that. He doesn't shoot the volume like Duncan does and Zach does, Karras does, but he made a shot. And then Duncan came back and made another shot, and all of a sudden it's 7 6. And I said, okay, we got, we, we're, we're okay. But it could have got ugly quick. I, you know, one more score, and I would have called a timeout. As it turned out, I didn't call a timeout the whole game. I, I love what you said to your team after the game. While well, we focus on the 59% shooting, the 14 triples, the four guys in double digits. You were all about defense. Derek Walton, yeah. Zach Irvin, defense, and the sharing of the basketball with well, 18 yeah, helpers. Derek Walton sh has shut down a great player who's averaging 16 points a game in Shep Garner. I mean, he was into him the whole time. And a lot of times, you're using so much time and energy, they might affect his offense. So, yeah, because he didn't make the decisions he usually makes. We had to keep working with him on that. But that, that was big. Zach on Taylor, right? A little difference in height, a little difference in weight. He did a great job, allowed us to stay with the guys on, and stay at home with the outside guys. He's taken great pride in his defense, hasn't he? You've really kind of pumped him up about being a better defender. Yeah. He's done that. He's rebounded better. He's assisting yeah. more on more. Well, he's, a, he's becoming more and more of a complete player. You know, the, only, the funny thing is he came as a shooter, Matt, and yeah. the only thing missing in the first semester was his shooting. And now he did a great job today, and that will gradually come. He needs to keep having that confidence that, you know, I, I got to take good shot selections, but I expect the ball to go in. Don't doubt yourself. I was really impressed with his ability to feed Donnell in the second half from the point. That's not an easy pass to make for a lot of point guards, yeah. let alone small forwards. Well, he, here's what happens. When he's that height, he can see over the pick and roll better than like a guard. Sometimes Derek only got to go underneath because he got this big guy on him. He can get his head up, see, see between the hands, and see how he has to elevate the ball. So uh, that's a big thing. When you have a big guard, Nick Stauskas did it really well. Tim Hardaway got to do it really well. It's big to have big guards, uh, big players in a pick and roll that can see because of their height. Aubrey Dawkins, perfect from the floor, wasn't looking over his shoulder. It didn't seem to bother him one bit, whatever shot he was taking. No, he really has a role on this team that he's really comfortable with now. I think when first he came, he started the year starting, and we just didn't have this flow that I wanted to see and said, okay, let's bring him off the bench, see if it improves our flow, and see if it improves Aubrey, and it's done both. It was a great effort. You know, we had a slow start. They got out of 7-0, but I just like how the way we fought back. You know, we had Spike and Karras down today, but we just had that next man up mentality in that show. They never want to see your captain go down or best player, but uh, next man up, uh, we all prepared to be the next person up, and um, we just got out there and got a win for our brother. Later on, a recap from the Citrus Bowl as Michigan battled Florida and our sharpshooting Ironman of the week. 
But up next, a look back at the Big Ten opener in Champaign-Urbana against the Fighting Illini. Nothing's easy in life, and this isn't easy, but the things that aren't easy in life that you get done are the best. It's absolutely the best, right? So that's the real, that's probably one of the big reasons that I love to coach is road wins, road kills. Big Ten opener featured two teams that could flat out shoot. The Illini shooting 45% of the year, Michigan better than 50%. Illinois would jump out to an early lead, but Karis LeVert scored Michigan's first nine points to stay close before Derek Walton gave the Wolverines their first lead. Around a screen from Vagna, drives baseline, hangs off the window, yes and one! Oh. Illinois would later go on a 13-6 run led by their dynamic duo of Kendrick Nunn and Malcolm Hill. Michigan would hang tough, though, thanks to another and one from Walton and the first pocket three from Duncan Robinson of the day. LeVert charges left baseline, kick out right side Robinson, eyes the three, got the three! Right side Duncan Robinson! Illini freshman Jalen Coleman lands would nail two of his three first-half triples late in the half, and that would give Illinois a 37-34 lead at the break. Michigan started strong in the second half on both ends of the floor, and it was keyed by Mark Donnell, who had a couple of blocks and buckets from inside and outside. Robinson back inside for Donnell. Reverse slam, good! Mark Donnell's got a dozen, and Michigan leads 40-37. to LaVert hesitates, drives left baseline, stops the short corner outside. Donnell for three, got it! Left side, Mark Donnell's got a career high, and it's 43-39. Donnell would finish with a career high in points, rebounds, and blocks. 26 points, 9 rebounds, and 3 swats. Michigan as a team turned the tables on the home club by shooting 48.5% in the second half and limiting Illinois to under 36% in the frame. Michigan would outscore him 44-31 in the second half, led by Karis LeVert. He finished with his second career double-double, 22 points, and he matched a career high with 10 assists. Michigan rolls to the 70. 68 win on the road. They've now won 10 of the last 11 in the series and four of the last five in Champaign. I mean, in practice, he plays like that all the time, you know. Uh, we just try to encourage him to play like that every game, and he really showed it tonight. I mean, without him, we don't, I don't know if we win this game. Karis found me a, a few baskets early, got my confidence rolling, and, um, you know, kind of started there, and then uh, we got some stops defensively. Um, but besides that, I mean, I'm just proud of our, our team's uh, effort, both offensively and defensively, and it was a good road win for us. So you start the Big Ten campaign with a win at Champaign-Urbana. You're down by three at the break, and you extend it and end up winning by double digits. Mark Donnell was unbelievable, not just in minutes played, but points, rebounds, and block shots. You know, we got, we got to earn everything here to get on the floor. And Mark's had many opportunities, but it's been inconsistent in games and practices. Well, he put together a week of really good practice. So while we didn't start him, he was, he was, he was really playing well against our other bigs. So we just said, he goes in there, make the most of it. He did. I mean, he was a huge impact for us in the first half, and uh, then we just started in the second half, and we we just got better as the game went on. As he he knows his role, that veteran guy who's been here three years, and he's seen us win good games on the road. He's part of that Elite Eight team. He's seen a lot of that stuff. It carried over. Harris Levert, another double-double for him. Tied a career high in assists with 10 and 22 points. He really carried you when you needed it early on. Yeah, I just can't. Here's the biggest thing with him. You take the points, the rebounds, everything. He has stepped up in a leadership role right now. I think it has to do a little bit because Spike, you know, Spike's not in practice as much. He's in rehab. He's, we're trying to get him healthy for his future life. At the same time, Karras all of a sudden is talking. He's much more co comfortable talking. I think that gave him a confidence and ownership of this team that is, I, we've seen it all of a sudden now it transcends to the court. It's always difficult to win on the road, especially in conference play. What did it tell you about your club to be able to deal with that type of adversity and come back and win the way as, def right. as, as effectively as they were? Yeah, I saw some resiliency there. I saw that um, when we met the first two plays, we didn't get a shot off. Their, the building was loud. Their defense was great. It was a huge crowd. And all of a sudden, we made one shot. Karras made a tough shot. And then we make another, and all of a sudden, we're answering them toe-to-toe. -to -toe. So uh, that's what I saw. And then so, when you're on the road and you're up, you're down three and a half. You know, we came right out of halftime and got that lead, and then we never relinqu relinquished it. Most home teams are going to make some type of run in that second half if you're out. And whenever they tried to make a run, we answered it really, really well so that it never became a factor in the game. Nice start. Thanks, Coach. All right. Thanks, Matt.
Stay with us. The sights and sounds of Michigan's Citrus Bowl duel with Florida is right around the corner. But when we come back, a first-time Ironman of the Week winner. Time for this week's Al Rose Steel Ironman of the Week. Duncan Robinson has been everything Michigan expected and more. His long-range shooting eye has had an immediate impact on the Wolverines. He says repetition has been the key to his consistent long-range shooting ability. A lot of people can get caught up in form when it comes to jump shooting, but now I'm just a believer in whatever feels comfortable and just make sure you rep it out. Robinson, step back three, pure. Oh, oh, oh. That was a sweet dish from LaVert, and Robinson filled it up for his fifth triple of the night. I expect to make every shot. Um, you know, I wouldn't take it if I didn't expect to make it, so... Um, you know, I just try to take good ones, and you know, a lot of these, a lot of the shots I'm making are, are great passes, great setups for my teammates. So a lot of credit goes to them. Robinson is a transfer from Williams College in Massachusetts, a Division III school who Robinson helped lead to the national championship game as a freshman. Following the season, Robinson decided to transfer and was stunned when he got a call from John Beeline. And he says, you know, I love what I see. I love you as a player. You know, I want you to be a part of our program. And here at this point, I'm still thinking of, uh, of being a walk-on or a preferred walk-on or, you know, maybe potentially earning a scholarship down the line. He goes, oh, yeah, you know, in case I, I didn't mention it, um, you know, we're talking scholarship here. Robinson says sitting out last year was challenging, though. You're not in games. You know, it's, a, it's definitely a different approach um, every day. But, you know, I just try to stay focused and, and really trust the process. Um, you know, I had some people, you know, back home in my corner as well as a lot of people here just kind of, um, staying on me to stay focused and um, you know, especially with going through the injuries we had last year, you know, myself being a healthy body on the bench, you know, that was kind of tough to watch it sometimes, but you know, in the end, I think it was, um, you know, it all worked out for the best and it, it gave me a year to get a lot stronger and, and just improve a lot. Having the kind of impact on this year's team has been a dream come true. I'm an East Coast kid. I always figured I'd kind of stay on the East Coast, um, but you know, when this opportunity came around, I would have been foolish not to jump on it. But since I've been here, it's just been, you know, obviously it's an incredible university. Um, the program, you know, speaks for itself. And, um, you know, the players and, and the people I've met here um, have, you know, have really helped me a lot. And you know, I'll never forget, you know, the memories I'm, I'm creating right now. The men aren't the only team to open conference play. The Michigan women open against Purdue. We'll recap their Big Ten Open next. Welcome back. Michigan opened Big Ten play Thursday at Chrysler Center against Purdue. Sophomore Caitlin Flaherty led the Wolverine offense, scoring 19 points to go with five assists and three rebounds. Freshman Hallie Thome chipped in 14 points and six rebounds, while senior Madison Rostovsky scored 11 off the bench. Michigan trailed by five at the break, but used a 7-2 run to open the third quarter, tying the game. Here's Flaherty, catch, fire, triple, splash. The Wolverines led by a point at the start of the fourth quarter, but the Boilermakers ended up winning in dramatic fashion when Ashley Morissetti nailed the three-pointer with six seconds left, securing a 65-63 win. Michigan held a six-point lead with two and a half minutes left when Hallie Thome fouled out of the game. That's the type of impact she's had during her freshman season. And Hallie will be the focus on next week's program. The 6'4 center learned the game alongside her twin sister and older brother in their backyard while growing up in Ohio. Michigan plays at Indiana later this afternoon before returning to Chrysler Center on Thursday to host Iowa at 7 o'clock. For Inside Michigan Basketball, I'm Sarah Van Meter. Next, Michigan closes the first year under Jim Harbaugh with double-digit wins. The story from the bowl game in Orlando is next. Welcome back to Inside Michigan Basketball. You know, the beauty of the Michigan sports family is the support they lend to one another. I've talked to plenty of Michigan athletes, so they always ask about the basketball team's chances. The basketball team is constantly asking about other sports teams on campus. As the football team readied for the Citrus Bowl, the basketball team gathered as one to cheer them on. Michigan gave football fans a reason to celebrate the new year with a dominating performance at the Citrus Bowl. 18th-ranked Florida came in with a dominating defense. Some say with a front four who could all play in the NFL. But they were no match for Jim Harbaugh's Wolverines on New Year's Day. Ed Kongurski is in Orlando. Just over a year ago, the players on this team went all-in with Coach Harbaugh. 
Their reward, a 10-win season and a Citrus Bowl trophy after thumping the Gators in Orlando. A credit to their focus and commitment over the last 12 months. Proud of each and every one of them, all the guys that played, all the guys on the scout team, everybody in Chef Beckler Hall. It's always a um, you know, project getting everybody down here and, and putting on and staying down here a week, and the schedule is crazy, but you know, we maximized everything and got everything out of uh, what we needed to get done. Words can't even like describe how proud I am of some of these young guys. You know, a lot of guys stepped up, some guys came in and uh, you know, we're going to be a good team in the future, and uh, it'll be a pleasure to watch them from uh, somewhere else. Players that just worked like you can't believe. I mean, they were calling, they called this bowl preparation Christmas camp. <laughs> you got fall camp, you got spring ball, and now you got Christmas camp. And they attacked it. They, uh, they never, they never rolled the eyes or anything. They just, they just got to work, and, and now we'll have our fun. Playing in steamy conditions just a couple hours from the Gators campus didn't phase the maize and blue. They put up over 500 yards of offense, controlling the clock with a physical style that possessed the ball for over 38 minutes, doubled Florida on first downs, and protected the pigskin like a precious heirloom, committing zero turnovers. Shout out to the offensive line. Those guys came out very, very hungry. They made sure they weren't, I mean, Florida has a very fast team. They like to shoot gaps, and they made sure that wasn't happening that much this, uh, today. Nobody's going through the motions. Everybody's attacking each day with enthusiasm, enthusiasm unknown to mankind. But we came out with the win today, and so it was great. Uh, I think we just wanted it more. You can see out there, uh, at times, like they wanted to quit, and uh, we just kept pushing through and, and stepping on their throats. This was a memorable way to send off all the seniors, especially quarterback Jake Rudock. The Florida native and game MVP won his final high school game at this same stadium. These seniors, all these guys on this team just put so much work in, um, you know, and coming off some tough losses, but we were able to get our 10 wins, um, and that was the best we could be at the end of the day, so uh, we're definitely excited about that. I'm happy this all happened. I'm happy I wouldn't change anything about this whole entire season. As a player, as a coach, uh, this was my favorite year in, in football, and I thought long and hard about it before I said that. You know, I, I really, uh, really thought about it, and and uh, for so many reasons, you know, for uh, so many reasons, so many. The most interesting stat from this one: Chesson, Drake Johnson, and Sione Homa are roommates, and all scored at least one touchdown. We're calling that an unofficial Michigan record. With the Wolverines at the Citrus Bowl, I'm Ed Kongerski for Inside Michigan Football. Ed, thanks. This on top of Michigan winning its 17th Great Lakes Invitational at Joe Louis Arena. The finest holiday hockey tournament in the land featured the Wolverines, Northern Michigan, Michigan State, and Michigan Tech. After a semifinal win over a gutsy Northern club, the Wolverines faced ex-Michigan assistant coach Mel Pearson and the Michigan Tech Huskies. The Wolverines knocked them off to set the record for most GLI titles by any club Kyle Connor, the outstanding freshman and Winnipeg draft pick out of Shelby Township, was named MVP. The Wolverines celebrate in downtown Detroit in grand fashion. What a week it's been for Michigan Athletics. They get the GLI title in downtown Detroit. They go to Champaign-Urbana and win their Big Ten opener by double digits. It's the Citrus Bowl domination of Florida. And then Michigan's basketball team comes right back here at Chrysler Center and never leads by fewer than 20 in the second half in a spanking of Penn State. It's been an awesome early 2016. Thanks for joining us here on this week's edition of Inside Michigan Basketball. We invite you back next week, a recap of Purdue, a preview of Maryland, and a whole lot more. Until then, Happy New Year, everybody, and go blue. Inside Michigan Basketball, delivered by UPS. From figuring it out to getting it done, UPS is here to help. Visit solvers.ups.com to learn more. Buy your local Toyota dealers. Visit buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Buy Abso Pure Water, the official bottled water of the Michigan Wolverines. And by Gardner White, you'll overpay anywhere else.